Hi, hey, hello, how's it going? It's Emily, and today oh, we're gonna have a little vampire moment. I realized looking at my TBR coming up this month that a few of them were vampire books, and I thought it would be fun to just combine them into a vlog. And the first one I want to mention is A Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I picked this up at my local indie bookstore recently because I, I've loved every book that Allie Hazelwood has written. I figured it'd be a pretty safe bet as far as purchasing a full price book. And just, I've been so excited about it. I'm so excited that she's doing a paranormal romance. I'll talk about it in just a sec I'm a chunk of the way through. I also have A Tempest of Tea on deck. So this is, I think it's going to be the fairy loot book for this month. And it was also one that I was just intrigued by anyway, hearing about it um, at the beginning of this year with everyone's anticipated releases videos. It was already on my radar, so I'm so excited that Fairy Loot is doing an edition of it. And I, I don't remember enough about the synopsis to talk about it right now, but I do know that it has to do with vampires and someone who runs a tea shop, and I'm excited. And so there's that one, and then Fairy Loot is also doing a special edition of the Crowns of Nyaxia series. Well, I think it's going to be a series of duologies, but the first duology that's out right now, they're going to be doing a special edition of that and putting it on sale later this month. So I want to see if I like the series to see if I want to invest in the special editions. And so, and I've been meaning to read that series for a while anyway. And that one is also a vampire fantasy romance book. So I'm excited about all of these and thought it would be fun to just have a vampire vlog. And anyway, back to Bride by Allie Hazelwood. We're following Misery Lark and she is the daughter of someone who is on the Vampire Council. Is he the head of the Vampire Council? Anyway, he's politically powerful in the vampire world. And she actually, he's powerful enough that when she was a kid, she was selected to be, there's kind of a, an exchange that happens between, um, was it wares and vampires, where the child of someone politically powerful of each of these groups, like, sends a kid over as kind of a collateral peace offering. So, like, if something happens between these groups, then, like, there's a kid sent over that, like, could get harmed if something were to happen and so it's kind of motivation to keep the peace between these two groups and humans are also kind of in the mix there anyway so misery was this this child that was sent over to live among wares for 10 years and she had a human a human companion and anyway so that's part of her background and she, after that, it has basically been living in the human world for a while and just kind of laying low. And she doesn't have a great relationship with her dad. Um, and she is asked to be in this political marriage with one of the alphas of this wear pack. And she's like, absolutely not. I have already given 10 years of my life for you know, the good of the vampire community and its safety. Like, I'm not, no way, no thank you. And he tells her who the marriage could potentially be with, and then after hearing his name, accepts. And the reason she accepts is because he, yeah, you, you find out that there, like, could be, like, is there a connection between him or someone that he knows and her friend that she had grown up with, who was her human kind of companion as she was in this trade situation as a kid, that person has gotten missing and she's trying to figure out what happened to her. And so there's, there's some politics here and she's trying to figure out first and foremost what happened to her friend and is just trying to survive <laughs> and is getting to know some wares a little bit more you know, obviously at first she's not having a grand time because wares are not really thrilled about having a vampire living in. And since she's marrying the alpha or has now married the alpha of this group, she's living in the home of the alpha where a bunch of wares come in and out and some of his seconds live there. Anyway, so there's, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. 
in this house and they're not thrilled that she's there she's not really thrilled that she's there but <laughs> she wants to know what happened to her friend and it's just been, it's just been intriguing i have laughed out loud so many times i love ali hazelwood's writing i always have a great time i always just think they're so funny and just entertaining and it has been exactly what i hoped and wanted so far personally from a paranormal romance that ali hazelwood writes i'm just I'm thrilled like this is why I was excited because I thought it would be exactly what it is and mm, I'm loving it I'm loving it so I am not quite halfway through I've read this chunk anyway but approaching the halfway mark and so I have some just chores around the house to do so I will continue listening to the audiobook as I do those so I'll get a little bit further today I love the narrator by the way if you're a fan of audiobooks, uh, she narrated not so Ali's books have been narrated by different people for the most part. I believe she narrated love theoretically. Anyway, I'm loving the narrator. I think she is absolute perfection for this book. I just mm, I'm I'm loving her narration. I think she's so talented and just Mm, getting all of the little nuances of the humor. I like the way she does male voices and makes it a little bit more natural. And <laughs> I don't know, sometimes it's hard to do that well, but I think she does that really well. Anyway, I'm having a grand time, so I'm going to get some chores done and continue listening. So we have some catching up to do. So I have finished Bride by Ellie Hazelwood. I really enjoyed this one. I didn't love the third act conflict. And I can definitely understand people feeling like there were multiple points throughout the book where a bunch of world building or information is just kind of dumped and it maybe it isn't the most natural way of building the world up, but I still just had so much fun with this one. I love their dynamic, I love the banter and Ali Hazelwood's writing and the humor and just had such a fun time with it and I do ultimately just enjoy the vibe of the world. It still does feel very contemporary. It just feels like a contemporary romance with some vampires and werewolves and some politics going on. I did enjoy these other things that were going on, the things, the mysteries that we were working towards resolving here. Just entertaining. I just had a great time with this one. I have also finished one other book for, for this vlog. I meant to check in while reading this one, but I have read Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent, and yeah, this one was a ton of fun. So we're following a main character who is human. She was raised by vampires, though, and raised by a pretty powerful vampire, and she from the time she was young was raised by this powerful vampire but isn't fully accepted by vampires and so she's had a very weird time in terms of feeling like she belongs like she doesn't fully belong with vampires but she also doesn't fully belong with humans and has kind of adapted some of the vampires attitudes towards humans and she kind of internalizes that you know, towards herself and doesn't like some of the parts that her of herself that remind her that she is weak and fragile and human. And so there's a, I can understand <laughs> some people finding it annoying having this weird dynamic of she doesn't like vampires because she recognizes how brutal and violent they are and doesn't like what they've done to humans, but she also has internalized some of these things about humans that vampires believe. And you know, so she's <laughs> a little bit all over the place in terms of trying to figure out her identity, where she belongs, and is working working through some of that. And I, I don't know, I, I, can, I definitely can feel some people not loving that parts of being in her head. And she is going to take part in this series of trials. And I do love me a good set of trials in a book. I, I find that just fun, fast-paced way to just move the plot along. And so she's going to enter this set of trials for the winner gets a wish granted by their kind of god figure, Nyaxia. And so 
you know, she wants to have this special bond with the person who raised her that only Nyaxia would be able to grant. And so she's considering, you know, with all this identity stuff, she's trying to figure out how she wants to resolve it. Like, does she want to be a vampire and go, you know, enter this bond? Anyway, so that's kind of her ultimate goal. And she's working through some of that throughout the book and trying to figure out what she what she wants and she meets through one of the trials involves needing to work with a, some some people in the competition and so you know she meets the people that she's working with. I really like these two characters and their dynamic super fun and so through working with them, she is coming to some realizations. There are some political things that seem to be happening outside of the trials that she needs to understand more about in order to help process everything. But her, her, the vampire who raised her isn't really being very forthcoming. And one criticism, and I, I can definitely understand if people have this criticism is that so again as I said I love trials in books like this it did feel like some of the trials in terms of the setup were kind of repetitive so it's fun when they're vastly different types of trials some of them felt like pretty similar in terms of what she was doing which it's like, okay, can we think of some other types of types of trials that she could get involved with anyway? But, you know, but still, I just had so much fun with this one. I love the world building and just being in this world was super cool. And I'm excited to keep going in this series. So there is that one. I've just started a Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. I'll put an image here because I don't have a physical copy yet. Um, so I'll just speak super briefly about that and then let you know once I finished it. But we're following Althi who runs a tea shop that is a tea shop by day but caters to vampires by night. Really what she trades in is secrets and that's kind of her most valuable commodity. And she uh, you know, a lot of family history stuff that um, she's working through and is kind of an immigrant to this place and trying to find find her, her footing, her path while remembering what has kind of happened to her people. And so she's running this tea shop. She runs this tea shop with Jen. I love their dynamic. They are super cute. And so, you know, right now at the beginning of the story, she's just running this tea shop and, you know, doing what it takes to do that and having some interesting dealings with some other vampires. And it becomes clear there's some politics involved in making sure that this tea shop can exist um, and not be threatened. And so, you know, there are some raids on this tea shop that have happened, but they managed to kind of get everyone out and hide everything before before these inspectors for the people in charge come in. So like, it, it's very difficult to keep this tea shop running. And the, the person that owns the property, uh, kind of their landlord is being threatened and so her ability to actually have this tea shop is being threatened and so basically there's some information a ledger like financial information that she wants that she's hearing about from some characters who have just come into her life and basically is thinking that a heist to be able to get this information and get this ledger would help get her the leverage she needs to keep this tea shop running. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'm having a good time. 
I'm enjoying being in this world. I'm enjoying the characters. So again, we're we're hitting a home run so far. Um, so I will come back later once I have finished and give some more final thoughts. So here to wrap up, I do now have a physical copy of A Tempest of Tea by House of Faisal. And I have finished it now and really enjoyed this one. I just had a great vlog reading some vampire books. So I think I gave a general description of what was going on and I had so much fun with this. I thought the heist plot was a lot of fun. There still was a lot of character focus. Like it wasn't the fastest paced heist book I've ever read by any means that there still was quite a bit with the characters but I really did enjoy the character work in here I thought some of their dynamics were, were really interesting and exploring their motivations was pretty interesting and I just thought they were just interesting well fleshed out characters and had fun watching them interact and try to come together to accomplish this heist and uh, I think it would have been fun to explore the tea shop a bit more. There wasn't too much about the tea shop itself, and I think it could have been fun to explore that a little more. But, I mean, I guess the point was the heist, so we, we spent much more time on that. But still, um, overall, really, really fun. I did enjoy the narrative. Like, she had a really good narration style. She was also, however, had a very soothing, relaxing voice and so I think there probably were definitely some things that I missed <laughs> because her voice was just so soothing which happens sometimes so I think when I reread this I might reread physically and just make sure that I catch those things but anyway had a great time with this one so thank you so much for joining me for some vampire reads and yeah, we'll see. I'll probably do, or I might do another one closer to October. And, and I did, there are definitely some more vampire books that I have on my radar. So we'll, we'll see if we do another one later this year and read some more vampire books. But anyway, let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were on them. And again, thank you so much for watching. I will link my Instagram down below as well as more information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.